Well, hey guys, for today's video, I want to address your concerns regarding facial fat loss from radiofrequency treatments. I've seen a lot of comments from you all asking, hey, can radiofrequency treatments end up leading to facial fat loss? As you'll recall from my videos on how your face changes with age, we have these fat pockets in our face that provide volume and with age, unfortunately, they do shrink and that contributes to a hollow under eye and overall loss of volume in the face. The last thing anyone wants to do is to prematurely diminish facial fat volume. Radio frequency is not just a device, but rather a type of energy that essentially bulk heats the tissues just below the skin surface for skin tightening. There are so many radio frequency devices that are utilized by dermatologists, plastic surgeons, and aesthetic medicine. You have radio frequency microneedling where the radio frequency energy is delivered to the skin through needles. And then you have radio frequency devices that apply the radio frequency energy from the outside. And these can even include devices that you yourself can purchase and use at home. When delivering radio frequency energy to the skin, you have to bear in mind the overall goal and the type of radio frequency device, the energy, the settings. But the way it works for skin tightening is by stimulating the fibroblast cells and those fibroblast cells are stimulated to make new healthy collagen. Ultimately that can improve skin uh, sagging, uh, wrinkles, but there are also settings that can target the fat cells to get rid of them. And in some cases that's desirable, like maybe if you are targeting uh, extra fat under the chin, you want a more sculpted jawline. But in other cases, as you can imagine, that is not desirable and you would definitely want to avoid that taking out good healthy fat in your face prematurely because once you get rid of it, there's no turning back. So can pursuing treatments that involve radio frequency end up with unwanted fat loss? Yes, they can. There is a potential for that. If you are someone who has had a treatment with a device that uses radio frequency and you feel as though you have lost facial fat inadvertently, there are a few things that may explain it. The first is, Unfortunately, it may just simply be guilty by association. As I mentioned, with age, the fat pads in our face, they naturally start to shrink. And you may at the same time be starting to pursue anti-aging treatments because we go through a lot of changes, maybe in our 40s, related to menopause, the skin is making less collagen overall, and those fat pockets are shrinking. And therefore, you may be more inclined to pursue procedures that may involve radio frequency, but at the same time, you are seeing the natural age-related decline in those fat pad and that fat pad volume and you may inadvertently be associating it with the radio frequency treatment but it's also possible that the radio frequency treatment did in fact trigger the fat loss because the provider did not use the correct settings they used the device inappropriately depending on the settings that were utilized and how the device was used yes you could end up heating up those deeper layers and triggering loss of the fat cells in those fat pockets. So it definitely is possible. And it's not so much the device per se, but rather the skill of the provider. The provider is the one who is going to be in control of the settings and where that energy is going. Are they only putting it under the chin where you want the fat loss? Or are they using automatic fat loss settings and ending up not paying attention and going elsewhere? This shouldn't happen with a qualified experienced aesthetic provider. So make sure you go to someone who has the experience, the credentials to be doing these types of procedures. The devices that are going to be used to deliver radio frequency, whatever the goal is, that are, that are used in a, a physician's office, like a dermatologist, a plastic surgeon, these devices, they do definitely possess the potential to lead to fat loss in the face. It's all in the settings that are used and the control the provider has on where that device is going. With a radio frequency facial, for the most part, it's going to be a bipolar device. And what that means is that the radio frequency energy is going to be directed into the skin and then back out through two electrodes that are in contact with your skin. Think of it as delivering the radio frequency energy in like a loop fashion. 
The therapist is in control of the heating, anywhere from 40 to 43 degrees Celsius, but no higher. And the depth of penetration is approximately two millimeters. That's just going to begin to heat the top part of the dermis. That's really where you want to be stimulating those fibroblast cells to make new healthy collagen. A radiofrequency facial can also improve skin elasticity and elastin production as well. Now for deeper skin tightening, a monopolar radiofrequency device may be used Used. This is different from a bipolar device in that instead of delivering the energy into the skin in that loop-like fashion, the energy is delivered down through the three layers of the skin, the epidermis, the dermis, and into the subcutis where the fat resides. This type of device is going to target the collagen-making cells down deeper in the dermis. Now this is going to be for really deep wrinkles and slack skin, temperatures 45 degrees Celsius, no higher. Now we talked a little bit about radio frequency micro needling. We have the micro needles delivering the radio frequency energy to a targeted location within the skin. And as a reminder, I have a whole video discussing radio frequency micro needling, the Morpheus 8. So I'm going to link that down below in the description box. You can definitely check that video out if you want to learn more about that procedure. When it comes to treatments with radio frequency based devices, precision of delivery of the radio frequency energy is key to the results that you get. And it's going to be dependent on the settings, the skill of the provider, as well as what the goal is that you are after and you as an individual patient. That being said, there is no single best radio frequency device out there, but they do all have the potential if executed incorrectly to trigger premature fat loss, that's definitely something you want to avoid. But in the hands of someone who has the expertise to know how to guide the settings and where to place the device, it's very low risk. Uh, it's not something that is seen routinely. Now, precision with delivery of the radio frequency energy is key because if you end up going too superficial, well, then you can end up with burns going too deep you can end up with fat loss. Unless, of course, fat loss is the goal, such as with shrinking the fat pocket maybe underneath the chin for a more defined jawline. The other thing that makes a huge difference when it comes to what device is going to be the best and the safest for you all boils down to the provider's facial analysis of you and what it is that you're hoping to achieve. They assess your anatomy. That's really important because there is no one device that's going to be right for everyone. And some devices may be more risky for certain people as opposed to others. Why does fat loss happen from radio frequency devices then? It happens because either inexperience in terms of setting selection, or sometimes with certain devices like the Morpheus 8, they actually have an automatic fat loss setting, which can be convenient, but if it's accidentally the one that is used, the provider ends up delivering the energy thinking that they are targeting the superficial dermis perhaps in the case of a uh, skin tightening procedure when in reality they have the fat loss settings on and could trigger uh, premature fat loss. It also could potentially happen if the given machine doesn't allow for very precise control of exactly where that energy ends up going. So some of it may be also related to the machine, the device that is being used. Again, the experience of the provider should be such that they know how to navigate that so as to not put you at risk for this. When done correctly by someone who has the experience, this should not happen. It's a very low risk of an adverse effect, but it certainly can happen. So if you believe it has happened to you, I, I can see where you're coming from. For sure, it definitely is a possibility, but the other possibility is that fat loss does naturally occur with age, and sometimes pursuing these procedures occurs at a time when you are experiencing a lot of age-related changes, especially in women in their 40s, early 40s, um, or around menopause. It's when you see a marked decline in collagen production accompanied by shrinkage of those fat pockets. Your face does undergo quite a bit of change during those years. It can be quite noticeable, and you may associate it with a given procedure. Recently, I did a video uh, as a rebuttal to some misinformation online about uh, tretinoin causing facial fat loss. And um, th there is no evidence that 
tretinoin and it's decades and decades of use causes facial fat loss whatsoever. Uh, it doesn't make sense. It's never been observed. Um, but um, you know, a lot of people who feel that that may be occurring may simply be experiencing normal age-related loss of those fat pockets um, and, and, and attributing it to the use of topical retinoid. Keep that in mind when you go on these forums online where people claim that they are experiencing something, there, is always, there are always two sides to every story. So yes, it is possible with these devices, but there are also the possibility of it simply being age-related. So those are the procedures that the professionals do, derms, plastic surgeons, but what about these at-home devices? Um, radio frequency at home, is that safe? Short answer is yes. Can it trigger facial fat loss? It shouldn't, and it's never been reported. At-home radio frequency devices, they have actually been studied, albeit in small studies, the research isn't super robust, but we actually have some randomized controlled trials of at-home radio frequency demonstrating that not only can it be effective for improving fine lines and wrinkles around, say for example, the eyes and the mouth, but it's also safe. The adverse effects reported with at-home radio frequency devices are limited to some temporary redness. Now we talked a little bit about radio frequency micro needling. We have the micro needles delivering the radio frequency energy to a targeted location within the skin. And as a reminder, I have a whole video discussing radio frequency micro needling, the Morpheus 8. So I'm going to link that down below in the description box. You can definitely check that video out if you want to learn more about that procedure. I'm not saying it's not possible, but to date, it has not been reported with at-home radio frequency devices. One randomized controlled trial of at-home radio frequency showed a nice effect for brow lifting and um, with no adverse effects. And another non-randomized controlled trial showed an improvement in tactile skin elasticity and firmness with the use of at-home radio frequency. And again, no, no fat loss reported with this. There was actually a recent paper, I think, um, I'm gonna say, sometime last year that came out, a uh, systematic review of the literature of at-home devices. And the, the authors went in and they examined all the literature behind any of these devices that are used at home. Like, are they effective? And they really looked at the highest quality studies that were available. This systematic review looked at all the literature with regards to a variety of different at-home energy-based devices for consumers to use um, in regards to safety and efficacy. They looked at things like at-home IPL, at-home uh, low-level laser therapy for androgenetic alopecia, and they looked at at-home radio frequency. And they actually felt as though the research was strong enough to recommend at-home radio frequency. Uh, but radio frequency at home appears to be safe. There have been no reports of facial fat loss from these radio frequency at-home devices. Um, why would you do that? Why would you do this at home when you can have a professional do it for you? Well, it is an expensive treatment to pursue. Uh, however, the devices themselves are not cheap either. It is something that you have to be highly motivated to stay consistent with. The results are not going to be as dramatic, as striking as what you would get in office because the temperature is not going to reach that to be, you know, getting into the dermis to really robustly boost that collagen production, but it certainly can get there and, and lead to improvements in collagen, just not as, as robust as an in-office treatment. Tripolar, they actually sponsored a study of their device. The, the nice thing about the tripolar is that it has a heat sensing technology, so it will automatically turn off if the temperature gets above 40 degrees. Because it will automatically shut off at 40 degrees, it's, it's a safety mechanism as well because it prevents overheating of the epidermis. It, it would be very unlikely for this device Device to end up impacting someone's fat compartments. The tripolar, I'm not sponsored by tripolar, um, but it is, it is the one that I'm most familiar with. And it can be helpful for skin laxity, fine lines, and wrinkles, as well as improving skin texture. Their, their industry-sponsored study did demonstrate a decrease in wrinkles around the mouth and around the eyes that was statistically significant with their device. Unfortunately, though, the study was not blinded. I'll show you the images here. The device overall does appear to be safe. There have been no adverse effects reported, and the literature does suggest that at-home radio frequency is an effective approach for improving the appearance of fine lines, wrinkles, and skin laxity, as well as skin texture. It typically takes anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes 
You do it two to three times a week for the first roughly six to eight weeks. By then you should start seeing some improvement and thereafter you need to do it a couple of times a month as maintenance. So it's not a one and done thing. You have to be motivated. And unlike um, my iRestore low level laser therapy helmet where I just plunk it on my head and I can go about and do other things, you need to be moving the device around. You can use it on the backs of your hands. You can use it to the crow's feet, um, around the mouth for, for laxity and fine lines. All that to say, your concerns are valid. It's definitely a possibility to have fat loss with radiofrequency treatments. Radiofrequency is not one treatment. It's a, it runs a gamut of devices that use radiofrequency energy to essentially target compartments to either stimulate collagen production and elastin or to destroy fat cells. And the outcome is contingent on the experience of the provider, their manipulation of the settings, where they're directing the energy, what your goals are, and your overall skin, and importantly, your anatomy. The at-home devices certainly can be effective. They're going to pale in comparison to what you get in office. They're very, very low risk though of harm to the fat that's never been reported. No adverse events have been reported with the at-home radio frequency devices. But if you have been using one of these and you feel as though it has caused some sort of facial fat loss, um, I do suggest that you see your dermatologist, your doctor, have them evaluate. Um, because like I said, that's not been reported, contact the manufacturer and let them know. Um, it should not happen. All right, y'all, I hope this video was helpful in addressing your concerns regarding facial fat loss with radio frequency treatments. Now stay tuned because in tomorrow's video, we're gonna be talking about fat loss around the eyes from lash serums. So you don't wanna miss that one. On the end slate, I'm going to link my video, Ozempic Face, where I talk about how one's face can change with weight loss. So you won't wanna miss that video if you are interested in all things facial fat compartment. Uh, check that one out next. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.